Hey, welcome back to Vice Grip Garage. And speaking of back, so is this square body step side back here. We're gonna be doing an engine swap with something pretty cool and here's why. My son Bentley and I, who's 11, started tinkering on this truck and it had a locked up engine and we fought on it for a little bit and did get it running, but only for a few moments when we realized, yeah, it's toes up and the daisy's got some issues. Wiped cam and probably a bad piston or eight we then just promptly push it back out of the rusty acres for another day. But the whole way there and the whole way back, Bentley was saying, Dad, we should put a big block in it or we should put this motor in it. Or do you, do you think that's the truck we could turbo? We could take the fender wells out. There's lots of room. Had all these ideas of engine swapping it. And that's when I realized the little fart was pretty fond of this here truck. He's actually going to be back from school here shortly. I want to surprise him. And we're going to go ahead and get this old junk out and put something budget minded in, I think you guys are really going to like. But first, teardown time. Sweet. My favorite. Oh, that's actually quite a bit of work. Kind of in my head, I'm going to leave this thing, this looks like a mid to late 90s kind of build, which now, crazy enough, is considered classic or retro. It's just mind-bottling. But I like all the styling features, the grill and the headlight covers and the visor and the wheels and just kind of the look in general. Plus, it's a step side. It wasn't originally a step side probably, but look, it's got a step side bed on it. You know what I mean? Anyway, step one, procrastinate doing that. Step two, try to talk yourself out of doing said thing that's causing said number one. Yeah, but I probably got to. Bentley might really enjoy it. He might even drive this to school rather than lawsuit, which is a bolt action three on the tree. But end goal is have him tootle this around the yard. I think he's really going to get a kick out of that. So I think, if I remember right, didn't remember that. Yep, everything is in here. So let's just put her up in the air, start on the bottom side, get all that disconnected and what have who's, and we'll drop her back down and tear in. So actually kind of be interesting. Last time we worked on this truck, I wanted to do it just like most of you folks at home would, and we just ranch down it on the floor. But we're gonna go ahead and put it on the lift this time. I wanna look under this truck and see if it still has a frame, how the brake lines are looking things of that nature. Plus, it's just going to make it a lot faster to drop the drive pole out and get the transmission cross member. I can't remember the exhaust. Might be open header. My leg is about to disconnect from my hips over here, but it's too late now. I can't get it off, essentially. And then see what other kind of issues we have underneath that may or may not need to be addressed. Well, let's get our first real close look at the underside of this rig. First thing right off the bat, 12 bolt rear. That's actually really good. We got uh, air shock elators. I'm sure they don't work. The tail lights seem to be fine. We can reuse on them. Speaker wiring approved. We got right and left out of one bad boy right there. Okay, now we got a new drive pole it looks like. That definitely wasn't just Craigslist rebuilt. I can still see a pretty decent U-joint in there. So that's great news. We know this fuel tank is full of water. At some point, that's gonna have to be addressed. This is a fuel line that Bentley ran just to run some sort of auxiliary fuel. We're gonna have to probably reuse that for now. Anyway, the frame looks really good from what I'm seeing so far. We bolted down the box there and uh, the Cab mount looks pretty good. Normally those are completely gone. I'm gonna say those are probably replaced at some point. Brake line, acceptable. I will accept it. That's good news, because you know we never got brakes. Who knows what this has. Transmission cross member here is gonna come out. So we've got some hardware down here, up here, and these two pieces. If it's a light duty truck like this with like a 
Turbo 350, which this is, I sometimes don't even put that piece back in, to be completely honest. But we'll see. We got the big old heat shield here. Uh, that's kind of hard to drop because there's a bolt between the floor and the frame right up there that you have to get out. So we're going to kind of be stuck with that. And again, this is a Turbski 350. The 400 kind of has a weird oblong shape, but it's been painted. It's red in the back. It's got a new seal. You can tell by looking at it. But then it's Chevy orange up here. So a little confusion there. I hard to say if it's rebuilt, but somebody was doing somebody was doing something there. That's the original flex plate and torque converter. You could tell by the corporate blue. That's that GM color before they went to black. Frames looking good up here. This is an all mangled lower control arms look pretty decent. That's from just now pushing it in. Hit her with the forklift. She's got no brakes. Okay. Bushings are perfect. Nope. I also bent that when I put her in the old Rusty Acres Pond. That's all right. Ooh, belts. I'll have to deal with those later. But I mean, underside, I'm going to give it a pretty solid... Look at the cab uh, support there. Those are usually completely gone. This is like a B minus. If I'm being honest, it needs cleaned, but I'm not afraid to spend some time on it now. And I don't want to break the kid's heart. So I wanted to check this before we started putting a bunch of time and effort into the thing, but it's solid. I'm liking what I see here. Still has the ridge drain plugs in it. It's got seat belts somewhere. Sweet. Okay, so. You know the drill, you've been here with me many, 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 many times. Chalk the wheels with the sandwich. Get the drive shaft out, transmission cross member. We'll get a pole jack in here to support this. We're gonna run a strap across. I'll probably go ahead and take out the motor mount bolts if I can. I may have to take out that fuel pump from up above. We'll see, but I'm gonna to try to limit how many times we go up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And up plus down. Here's a genuine question, not the R&B singer. I was sitting here thinking, where do you start with your engine poles? There's 52 ways to skin a cow. I usually start with the drive pole. I don't know why, just habit, pulling these in driveways and whatnot. Is this wrench stretching? What's going on here? But I was got to thinking, you know, where do you, where, how do you do yours? Where do you start, Grand the fluids? Disconnect the battery, you know, stuff like that. Bleep bloop it down there. I'm curious to learn what the most common thing is. I gotta roll this. Torque, torque. I ain't got enough torque today. And I can't turn that. Great. Just got to thinking since everything on this vehicle is wrong, I think I'm gonna go ahead and drain the transgression. It's uh, likely it's probably over full. If I pull this out, it's going to leak 58 gallons on the ground. It's going to look like a murder scene. <laughs> Only got half a bag of cat litter left. We better save her for up front because, of course, I did not drain the radiator like we were just talking when I pulled this in. So let me go find my oil pan thing. We'll overfill that and spill that on the ground. Plan. <clears throat> I think I just heard Jessica getting home with the boys. So Bentley should be flying through the store any minute. That is water. That's milkshake. That's somewhat ATF looking. Wow. I was going to reuse this transmission. <laughs> oh boy. So not only was the engine full of water, but so was the transmission. Now I should probably drop this pan and service that as well. I'm going to call up, oh, 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 Riley! Have him run me out of fill tray, I think, just to be safe. All right. Operation H2O evacuation complete. Oh, we could slide this out. 
took my cap with me. I'll be careful of them needle burns, you know. There. I'm going to grab some tape and wrap it around the drive shaft here so my U-joint caps don't go spraying. You ever chase these needles around? <laughs> Not fun. Yeah, that's pretty good still. So now I'm going to work on this cross member here. I'm going to run a ratchet strap across here. I'll show you when I get to that point. But we can suspend this on that strap, and we go to pull the engine out. It acts like a sling, and it'll move and give us some freedom. And typically, it'll slide right off the tail shaft to come out, and it's going to prevent us from being down here with jacks and things like that while we're up front and just giving her the onions. Missing some hardware. So they did probably drop the transmission out the bottom and left the engine in would be my assumption. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 97 volts, okay. Well, I think a guy's got the underneath of said truck pretty well dialed in. Got the transmission cross member out. I got my ratchet strap across there, just wheezing, barely hanging in. It'll do the trick though. Dropped the starter out of the way, took the cooling lines off because I don't know what I'm gonna do there yet. Take them with the engine and transmission or just pull them out separate. Also went ahead and drained the oil there. Got the shift linkage disconnected, the speedometer cable, pretty much everything. So now I'm gonna drop it back down on earth here. I'm gonna loosen up the headers Probably take the spark lighters out. I don't want to break them. I'm going to try to reuse those. Probably take the fuel pump off so I get better access to the motor mount bolts, which is next. And once that's done, we can start talking about, you know, the cooling system, the hoses and the doodabs and the digitals and all sorts of stuff. But we're getting there. We're gaining ground. Now's a great time to talk to you guys about Factor, the sponsor of today's video. Factor is a subscription-based meal delivery service that provides delicious meals right to your doorway. Now, all of you guys know my insane schedule. It's completely unpredictable. I never know when I'm gonna eat dinner or supper, and it makes it really difficult some days for Jessica to plan anything for me. Now, I don't have time to go into the kitchen, root around, try to make myself something. I absolutely do not have time to try to figure out meal prepping or anything like that. And that's where Factor is an absolute home run for me. These fresh, never frozen meals are a simple heat and eat solution. All a guy's gotta do is jam some holes in this thing, snag it in a microwave, cook it for two minutes, sit down and enjoy it. Now I know what you're thinking, well, they can't be that good. But truthfully, I have yet to find one I do not like. In fact, I even got my older brother hooked on them. He literally lives on these meals. Chefs and dietitians have created all of these delicious meals, and there's a lot to choose from. Keto and vegan and lean and mean are just chef's choice. Let them choose for you. Now, if you're ready to give Factor a try, all you got to do is click that link down there below and use code VICEGRIP50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. That's huge savings. Again, click that link, use code VICEGRIP50 to get 50% off. Thanks to Factor for sponsoring today's video. Let's get back to the step side. We're getting real close. The boys are back from school. The boys are back from school. All right, Bentley. Truck's in the garage. What do you think about motor swap? Yeah. You gonna like that? Mm -hmm. Okay, here's a question. You think you're gonna like this better than lawsuit? Possibly. Oh, okay. Well, Bradley's now 17 feet tall somehow. Grew like a weed. So he's gonna help me get this hood off. Maybe you can find that little stool and hold this up. Found we get it. the bolts out. Rary, you can go on that side and we'll take these bolts out and get this hood off so we can see what's going on. Okay? Where do you want me to put it? Just in the front in here so you can stand on it. Right, there you go, bud. Benjamin Button. You gotta hold that. Rather. Okay, hold your side. Brad, you've done this a hundred times. You act like you've <laughs> never taken a hood off. <laughs> Should we put some hood savers on this? Yeah. 
Okay, we're gonna come towards you, Bentley. Right. It's a little tall to go on the roof. Okay, ready? Tilt forward, let down, Bentley. All right, then you run out of the way. Ready, Bradley? Perfect. And let's go set it against these tires over there. We can go front down. Turn. All right. Okay, Benjamin. Jump up here, get the spark plug wires off, the air cleaner, stuff like that, okay? All right. So we're gonna go ahead and just start tearing off the ignition and everything else you probably just heard. Get the carbon tater off, you know, the old oh, tool like a hop in there. I think this has got a quadra bog on it, if I remember correctly. Yep, looks like it. Get the pull plate on. While he's doing that, I'll start the headers. You know the deal. How was school today? Pretty good. Got learned up? Uh-huh. Most of these spark plugs are already off. Oh, are they? There's one in here. Well, I think that's when we figured out it was a lost cause and just shut her down. I forgot this was an AC truck. It is? Yeah. Oh. Must be a Silverado. Yep. All right, Bentley, if you pull that transmission cooling line out of the way, let's see if I can ease this out of here. There's definitely still liquid in there. Oh, close the back dock. Oh no, we got juice on the floor. Yeah, a lot. I'll uh, try to pour this in that bucket when I get it out. Okay, ready? Yep. Can you put it around that? There you go. Nice, we got it. Yep. So we're really close to getting this motor out. All we need to do is take the motor mount bolts out, and it should come right out. First, what we're going to do is put the, lift, the truck up, because we have a big mess to clean under it. There's about every color fluid under there, isn't there? Yeah, this is like pink, red, Yellow, some brown, <laughs> and that stuff. And that stuff. Oh, power steering lines too. We gotta get right, those off. Right, yeah. What's that hanging by? <laughs> Speaker wire? Yeah. I think that's our brake light wire. <laughs> so yeah, like Bentley said, we're gonna get this straightened up. Probably go ahead and I like to pick up my tools every now and then halfway through projects, clean them up just so I know where they're at because they're scattered all over right now. Ratchet strap just barely hanging in there, but it's doing the job. Uh, well, that's an accessory wire. I think that was probably a fuel pump or something. Anyway, we're getting very close. Power steering and the uh, motor mount bolts. Should be able to drop this thing down. Mississippi River. Okay, so that's out. That one's out. All right, buddy, ready to pull this thing? Yep. You let me know if something looks out of place. 
Those lines need to be moved. Yep. You want to come over here? Hold them. Yeah, stand on that side. Don't, just don't get your hands in between anything. Oh, wait, stop. Yeah. Uh, that wire back there? Oh, that's a ground. That's a 3 8 Body ground. Got us. Oh, I'll get a snips too, because we got to snip whatever that wire is going to the back that the header was dangling off of. A snip? Yep, snips. Um. Top drawer. You want a monkey in there and get that? Cut it with this thing. We ain't got the time. Just cut the wire in half? Yep. We're free. Yep. All right, ready again? Yep. Transmission cooler lines? What is this in? This is a 350. 350? I think the wiring harness might be might be connected to the bell housing bolt. Suspicion confirmed. We got voltage. I need a 916th. 916? So we got the starter and accessory wires through the bell housing bolt there, going in between the dipstick and the block. I'm gonna try to pull all of this, and I also forgot to disconnect the charging whirler. Uh, you get a 7 16 and or a 10 M&M. &M. We'll get that off too. We got more digitals cleared. You got to take that pulley off and small block Chevys when you're pulling the transmission or it hits the front firewall up here. Or rad sport or whatever you want to call it. There you go. You clear? Yep. Is there any other hoses or pipes? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, is that connected to anything? I might see some. How many engines do you think I've pulled this year? 30? Probably. Uh, I see another ground right up here. Oh no, that's cut. Never mind. I think it's just snagged. sitting there. I think we're clear then. Here we go, buddy. Oh, go find that shop back, please. The small red one? Oh, the big one, please. One that's full of gasoline and mouse houses. Well, there we go. 350, 350 out. We're going to try to reuse that transmission. Hopefully clutches and everything inside were damaged with that water in. But it wasn't that much, all things considered. And we'll be able to tell more when we put a filtre in it. So this old 350 here... Whoa, she's spicy. 
This old 350 here has a wiped cam, we know that, and I think I was looking at a couple of the cylinders or pistons. I can't remember, it wasn't that long ago, but it feels like a million years. We saw some damage there too, but what I'm saying is if you guys would like to see a full teardown and inspection of this engine, let me know, because we can rip this thing down, see what all is wrong with it, and maybe see if it's a rebuilder. We got a lot of stuff we could put this in, don't we, bud? Yeah. I think it was this one. It looks like the moon. Oh, okay. Like oh, that's right. Yeah, it might need to be bored or something. But anyway, bleep bloop it down in the comments if you want to see a teardown video of this thing and just try to help identify some stuff that you guys have seen out there, maybe, or even just identify if it's a rebuilder or not. Uh, what I'm going to do now is do the old shop back trick. I've showed you guys this before, but it's been a while. We're going to hook this up to the water pump and let it eat. And we're gonna to try to suck as much as we can out of the heads before we plop this thing down and dump it all over the ground. Just make sure these are flipped into the, you know, wet vac mount sucker 500 mode, not the dry one, because that could be a mess. All right, go ahead and hook it up to the water pump there. Let it rip. Fluid. No, I feel it. Let me uh, put this down a little bit more. Dump 50 gallons on the floor. If you open that up, I bet it's full. Oh, oh yeah. A couple gallons? Yep. Probably a quarter full. Cool. I needed one more thing off of this engine before I set it to the side, and that was the high pressure power steering line. I needed the bends that were appropriate for the C10 truck because the engine and accessory setup I'm going to be using went to a performance car, so it was different. And I fought on this, and heat, and fire, and juice, and more fire, and juice, and whatever. I got this big nut off, but it was spinning the whole thing, so I had to use a needle nose vice grips, and a regular vice grips, of course, and then bent this in with a hammer to get a good swing at it. Kind of took a risk because I was getting to the point, I was thinking about using this whole pump assembly, but did break that free, thankfully. Now, we can finally move on to breaking out the shift machine, the old go forward, go back selector here, from the engine itself. Normally I like to put that on a furniture mover, let this dangle with the correct angle, and then I could just slide this out of the way, and the same going back. Well, tonight I don't have that. I'm just gonna unbolt it and, and use a swift jerking motion with all of my lower back, separate these, and I might run into Hobo Freight tomorrow and grab a couple more of those. I think they turned into miscellaneous children toys around the property here. And that'll just make bolting up the other engine a lot easier. I'm gonna set this one aside for now. Let you guys decide if we're gonna tear into that thing or just roll it down the hill into the forest. Yep, yep, yep. Ah, I'm gonna snip this right off. And we'll snag it. Let's see, that one's out already. Mm -hmm. Oh, she already wants to go. I just gotta hook a chain on it, drag it out of here. Oh, almost forgot to give me another gear cable here. Yep. Ah, yep. Ah, ah. There we go. Separated. That's good.
Well, you know, the time snuck up on a guy. It is late, and I am famished. I'm going to throw some groceries down my neck. I also wet the back neck. Get a few minutes of shut eye. See you guys in the morning. I'm going to show you this engine first thing. And we're going to clean up this transgression. Get them mounted together. Get them popped in this thing. Hopefully, it's about ready to fire by the time Bentley gets home from school. He's going to be really excited. I should just cut them loose in the hay field, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's what we'll do. See you in the morning. <laughs> Good afternoon. Truck is still here, and the morning has long left to chat, as the kids say. I don't know where they're chatting or if it's faxing or writing. Anyway, the letters didn't show up for the morning time, I guess is what I'm saying. We've got to get this thing buttoned up today. I'll leave tomorrow for another event. I'm out of time. We should be able to pull that off. Now, let's go ahead and look at this engine. And again, this is a budget build, and you know me, I like to use stuff and things and junk laying around that I have. I don't like being wasteful. So this engine should be familiar to some of you. Well, here you go. A small block Chevrolet for that cute little step side over there. And some of you are right now are going, what are you trying to bamboozle me? Bill over there said he's pulling my legs off. That ain't cheap. This isn't budget. Another guy just said, that looks like a crate motor. That's not cheap. Well, it's not. This is all junk and things, which is great. This is actually very cheap to put together. And here's the main reason why. Remember that rot bird, that Pontiac Firebird that I got running and drove home? Cute little car. It ran pretty decent, it shifted pretty good, but the body was just absolutely trashed on the thing. It was so rusty, it was far gone. Well, I traded the car itself for some labor around the shop and some miscellaneous stuff. I'm gonna keep the tires and wheels because the tires were new, I could always use rollers. And this is that 305. So we pulled the 305 out, and the initial idea was to just tear it down, inspect it, clean it, put it back together. This has been Craigslist rebuilt, essentially. I kind of tricked your eyeballs. It looks pretty good, right? It's just a bunch of spray paint. The bad news was when we tore it down, it was starting to wear some cam lobes out. So you can get an OEM camshaft for these still, but you're already spending the same amount of money than a cheap performance cam. So we went ahead and put a Lunatic cam in it. The cam and lifter set I got off the Jungle website, literally. It's a model that I really like called Bare Bones. It's a 281, 293 on a 112. They work really good with small displacement. We put one in Rocky, the Chevelle, uh, and, and that is still running good today. I put one in the Blaisdell Chevelle, which was another 307. That thing absolutely rips. So I wanted to put that in this as well, because again, it's only 305 cubic inches. Everything else here is painted. This isn't new. Spray painted, spray painted, spray painted. Fan is spray painted. All the pulleys are spray painted. The power steering pump is spray painted. The block and oil pan, spray painted. Reused the lightning whirler. We did put some new lightning hoses on it. These are wire looms. My good friend Donnie gave us that. Uh, this is junk laying around. The intake is new. The chrome is just a $70 eBay chrome kit, which fit terribly. The timing cover is actually wrong for the application, but yeah. And then the carburetor, we got a brawler double pump around here. And I've got carburetors laying all over the place, so that was pretty simple. We did spend a little bit of money on the headers. There are no brand name. I don't even know what they are. Fried rice, long tube headers, supposed to fit a C10. The coating is already coming off though. Well, that, that was the whole idea is the other ones in the truck are rusted and rotted. So I wanted to shine it up a little bit, but these are probably going to do the same. Uh, reused the, the uh, flex plate, 
This starter is a little mini starter we had laying around. I mean, that's pretty much it. A whole bunch of spray paint and elbow grease, camshaft and lifters. Um, obviously, it's had new head gaskets and oil pan gasket and timing cover gasket. This is going to be enough displacement for Bentley to have fun, probably get him through high school, and then he could do other stuff. Now, there was, he wanted to, and there's probably a lot of you that said, man, stuff that supercharged 400 in there and that TH400 transmission. That would be really cool. And if I was going to be driving it, <laughs> yes, I guarantee I would have done that, but it's too much for him. It's way too much. I don't want to create an unsafe condition. You know what I mean? This might even smoke the tires. We don't know yet. So this is what we're going to be throwing in. I'm going to get the pull plate on this guy, get it off of the engine holder upper thing, get this mounted to the questionable, we don't know if it works, transmission, and then let's start fighting this back into the truck. One would think we would paint and clean up the engine bay, but no, no. Have you seen the show? Let's just jam it down. Got this bad boy dropped over here. Got to get an Allen wrench to get the <whistles> hardware out that Bentley put in. Forgot to mention, we don't have to break in this cam. Thankfully, it's going to be really quick. Volunteer Performance and Muffler did that for me. They got a little run stand and uh, they fired this up and broke in the camshaft. I haven't heard it in person, Ron. They said it sounded pretty darn good, though. Um, this is a just a Summit brand intake, significantly cheaper than, you know, a name brand, Holly or Edelbroken. Dual plane, of course. We're not trying to spin this to the moon. This will make power about 3,000, no, 2,500 to 5,500 to 6,000 ish. It's got stock valve train in it, so. It's not going to rev to the moon. Now on the truck there, I think I'm going to use the gauges in the dash. Just They work fine and uh, just keep it simple for Bentley. So this already has the temperature sending unit in the head. I was fixing to take it out of the other engine, but we don't need to. But I need to change this. This is for an aftermarket oil pressure gauge. And we need to put in this unit right here so it communicates to the dash correctly. Um, this is a good trick here. The street elbow pops these out at a 45 so they fit. When you put performance intakes in, this little bell will actually bottom out in here and not allow you to tighten this all the way into the block and you'll have a mess. So just go down to the hardware store, pick up one of these elbows and it'll kick it out like that. So I just need to take this out, clean it up a little bit We'll reuse that, pop that in here, so we'll have oil pressure, we'll have water temp over there, and then I need to plug this off, and I think I can, yep, we'll just pull that out of here. Slide these two new friends together. really hope this transmission works because I'm not buying another one. I do have another questionable used one, if and need be. Oh, almost had her. There we go. Let's see, front's got to go down just a little. Oh, maybe a little too much. get one of these devils started. There. Now we can figure this out. Let's see. Oh, that anti-burn shielding thing goes in that side over there.
Tail converter still seated. Okay. Missing a bolt. Oh no. Here we can see that 46776, that's 7879, 305, two bolt main. So we're gonna go ahead and lift this up in the air now so I can get the torqualizer converter. Yeah, it is spinning freely, so we don't have any issues there. But I gotta get that mounted up, and I think everything else is on here. I'm gonna try to put it back in with leaving the accessory pulleys on, I'm trying to be lazy. And now once that catches on the rad support and starts bending it, then we're gonna go ahead and take it off anyway. So, you know, the usual. Torque converter pullout is perfect. Don't have to shim that or anything like that. Do have to take the motor mounts off, completely forgot about that. Might as well put that power steering line in as well. That'll be robbed from the other pump. So that way when we drop this in, we're not having to fight with that in close proximities. All right, let's see if we can snag this thing back in here. Okay, yep, yep, all right, sure. And let me get this wire in up out of the way. Where's that? Where did it go? Why can't I find it? It should be here. Wow. For Pete's sake, I gotta get all the way in here. What am I, some sort of billy goat? No, I'm not. Okay. Is any of this correct? This comes up here. We got a factory tack in this truck, guys. That's the whole reason we're doing this. All right, yep. Should be able to bring that down 36 feet. 36 feet. Oh look, it's installing itself. Let's keep going. Maybe a little more in. Slip, there you go. Slip some more. This 305 wants to live. It's just following directions. Slip in there. Don't break my distributor though. There you go. Slide. Slip and slide. There's a strap in there, remember? For the transmission. We're going to grab it on the front now. Actually, we need to grab it on the back. So we can get some tiltage. Never find that socket again. Okay. Grab it in the back. That'll lift up the rear. Pretty good, fellers. I don't know why you're just sitting over there. You could be in here guiding the side in. Okay. Yeah, I really need someone here to twist. I need a good twist on this. Kind of like that. <laughs> Right there. If I give it a little downage. Oh, let's stay on the back side. Down. I mean, I can't believe it, but I guess I got to. I'm looking right at it. It went right home. Right 
to home. Huh. Well, the guy was able just to rock this by grabbing the chain, and I got this mountain bolt in. And our ratchet strap is doing its job back there. So, should be able to get it off the hook. There we go. Nice. Out with old junk engine, in with old junk engine that's spray painted. Very good. Okay, now, dipstick tube is getting a little smashed. Let's get it up in the air, get the transmission cross member in, and we can fight with that. See this ratchet strap went right back onto the pan where we had it when we pulled it out. No assistance, no one under here, no jacks, no fuss, no mess. Remember that, fellas, save you a little bit of time. Okay, I'm gonna put a pull jack under here, lift this up, get this cross member in, and I think that bolt will slide right in. It's already fairly close. This one's already in. And then we'll have this thing bolted home. Well, this was going pretty good, actually, until I discovered the transmission mount is absolutely hammered in there. Just stripped, and I didn't notice, but the hardware I took out, wherever that is, oh. It's just smoked. So, thought crossed my mind, just ratchet strapping this down, you know, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and run into town, pick up another bushing. O'Reilly's has those on the performance shelf. And then uh, we'll continue our project here. Got the other motor mount bolt in, so that's done. Everything's lining up great. Of course, Chevrolet makes that super easy. And uh, different transmission mounting configurations is all in here as well. So it's really hard to mess these up. Good old square bodies. Bentley's back from school, and uh, we got the cross member in. Got the new poly bushing in and put some new hardware into some of this stuff because the other stuff was really crunchy and there's a chance that this transmission isn't even going to work. <laughs> and then we'll have to drop it and try something else. Right now we're going to finish uh, tightening these up and then we'll put the drive shaft in and do whatever else we need to do down here first hopefully like uh, shift linkage that's in. And then bring it down and start putting accessories on, huh? Yep. You gotta decide what fan you want. That car fan, or do you wanna put the heavy duty fan on? Uh, it's probably the heavy duty. Yeah, I think that's a good choice. Not as pretty, but give you a little bit more CFM. Yeah. Well, what do you think, bud? It's pretty shiny. Yeah? Uh, I think all we have to do now is get the fan on, radiator mount, radiator, carburetor, throttle, headers, and then, uh, got some wiring to do. Yeah, some wiring. Got to figure out a temporary fuel tank. Got to get the. Oh, I talked about putting that power steering line in, and I forgot. Oh, yeah. We got to do power steering. Why don't I start on headers? You want to get that pole plate off, and we'll tape up the intake for a second, and then we'll just kind of keep moving forward. Okay. Guy always has these purple hornies laying around, and uh, we were gonna throw them on the truck. This side clears no problem, but this goofy cross member for that late model exhaust, not gonna work. So for now, we're gonna be open header, and then we'll have a volunteer come down and put real exhaust if it runs good. How about that? Okay. All right, you wanna put that back where you got it? Yep. Thanks, buddy. So I just, uh, from the bottom, it was easier. I got that power steering line in. I wanted to put that on before I put it in, remember? And then I did it. Okay, that's great. That was a struggle. Now, I'm gonna get the starter wiring buttoned up. And I think, knock on balsa, that's tight ish. I think we're going to be done under the truck. There we go. Headers was kind of the longest time consuming 
rest of it's just bolt on ingredients. Alright, so I just got our fuel uh, tank for now. Um, instead of hooking up to the pump, since we have a mechanical pump on the motor, I just ran the fuel line directly to the tank. And we should be good. This is really old fuel. There's a lot of it though. Alright, you want to try to find a bungee cord or something? Strap yeah. it in there a little bit. I'm up here working on the carburetor. I got that down. I got to find some uh, some uh, adapter doodabbies for the fuel to make it happen around the other side. About ready to drop in the radiator and get that plugged in. Get the shroud on, all of that, and we are very close. We should be able to fire this tonight, but it's late. We'll probably have to wait for Bentley to get home from school tomorrow because you want to drive this thing, right? Yeah. Take it around the field? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Oh, oh no. Making a mess. We may eventually put a different rad in here, something nicer, but this is gonna work for now. Doesn't look like there's physically any issues with it, so we'll just uh, see what it does for us. Save some money. Okay. Where's the other? Oh, I gotta get the rubber grommet. These little guys going f f sub to rate Raji the to go on the support. That's what I'm saying. Okay. And then yeah. Yep. Yeah. Forgot the shroud, so I had to pull the rat out and throw the shroud back in. Not used to running those things. They're usually so busted up you can't even utilize on them. Where do all these go now? For the shroud? I'm not sure. This one needs a speed nut. Check the table over there. Did you find them? Probably not. So nice. No, smaller than that. Look at the scan your peeper on it. They're just little devils. Yeah. yeah. Rad is about in. I gotta get a piece of rubber line for this right here for the transmission cooler. Remember, we twisted this off an accident getting it out. That's what that looks like. So I just cut a chunk out of here and then flared this piece out of this piece and then used a fitting to screw that into the rad just to save money instead of buying a brass piece. Now we just gotta connect a little rubber line from here to there. Uh, I got to find some rubber caps. Actually, Bentley, can you start digging through stuff? We need rubber caps for this for now and the water pump for now because I don't know if the heater core leaks and I don't think I have enough heater hose mm. to make that work. And then I need to switch the thermostat housing. This one's angled. The other one must have been straight, see? And I don't want to buy another upper rad hose. These ain't getting cheaper either. So we'll just throw this on the shelf. I'm sure we'll use it with something. Put that straight one on for now. While we're down to fluids and a battery at this point. I just topped off the oil, had some in it. And then I added a quart of heavy duty diesel oil. Got a battery. Bentley found it. Marine, thousand cranking amps. We gotta rip this motor out of the truck. Okay. That's what we got. It's the only one that had charge to it, right? Yeah, there's one other 4 volts, but it was like a weird, super tall, skinny battery. Oh, okay. Fire it's check? Gonna... No fire. 
Okay. Uh, find that transmission juice. It's in the back of the volunteer dually. We'll fill up the transmission. I don't want to fire that with it empty, burn up the pump. We don't have the right doodabs or whatnots to plug up the cooling system tonight. I can get them in the morning, but we're going to at least try to fire it right now. And whoever put the upper rad hose on, despite all the efforts to save on it, I think I'm going to have to get another new one. It's uh, too short, basically. What is... I don't know what that is. All right. It's looking good. Coming along. All right, little man, you ready? Yep. Okay. Distributor's hooked up. Oh, battery hooked up? Oh, yeah. Let's put that back on. Lightning hoses are on. We've got all the sparklators in. That's grounded. You put a little makeshift fuel tank in. Vacuum to the trans isn't done yet, but we don't need that right now. Oh, got the hickam ups You're going to hang me upside down? No. Okay, ready? Yep. Do you want to turn the key? Sure. Yeah. Let's do that. You know what to say before you turn the key, though. Bring the thunder? Oh, of course. Make sure it's in park. Ready? Yep. Bring the thunder! Oh, the key was stuck. Still nothing? Nothing. There must be something wrong with the ignition rack. We didn't have that issue before, did we? Uh, we did have to change the starter, but it worked after that. You want to try to hook up your lone wolf 5000? Yeah. Oh, we're going to hook up a lone wolf. Ah, could be ground. Let's clean that up. Find a flap disc. This has got 40 layers of spray paint on it. That's true. Flap this in the, the, well it's late, I can't think. The death wheel with the flapper disker in it. Just any of these? Yep. Here, there's one in it. Goose head. Where's the big batteries? Um, Grab one off right there. Hoping that the ground is not grounded. That would be nice. Otherwise, I'm going to put a long wolf 6000 on it. Let's so get some fresh metal there so it bites. Key now, see what happens. Well, isn't that something? Pull the headlights out. Those don't work. Did they work before? Uh, I feel like one of them did. Is anything got any power anywhere? Not that I'm seeing. Um. Should I window wipers? Nothing there. Should we try to jump it? See if that is a problem? Hmm. We ain't getting any juices anywhere. I have to dig into this for a minute. We got digital problems. Quick and easy fix. You know, the battery that had 12 volts, well, it was dead. Imagine that. There is some sort of force that I carry that if I were to touch a battery, whether it's new, fresh off the charger, doesn't matter, it is dead within, what, two hours? Yeah, or less. Or less. I don't, I must be like negatively charged or something like that. All right, you wanna try it again, buddy? Yep. All right, bring the thunders. <laughs> if 
fired. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Okay, go again. Hold on a second. Okay, now go. Look at that, buddy. Loud. Loud, yeah. Okay. You like the sound of the cam? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Remember, uh, you might not remember this. Remember Rocky the Chevelle? Kind of, yeah. That's the same camshaft. It is? Yeah, the one we went to power to around. Okay, well, that's, uh, we should get Browry and put the hood on, and then the rest I could finish up tomorrow. Okay. Right. Well, we got the hood back on, a little bit of a team effort. The uh, bolt holes are all wrong and wallered out. She's got the square body band in her, and then this needs adjusted as well, but we could deal with that tomorrow. I'm gonna get some shut-eye, run to the parts store in the morning, get some cooling, accessorized and accoutrements, and then we'll get this thing dialed in. See you tomorrow. Well, it's the following day again. I've got like 37 seconds to finish this thing up. I've got to finish loading the trailer. We are on the road. Bentley's going to be home any minute for school. Got a new battery in here, wiring up to digital choke. I've got to finish the vacuum to the vacuum accumulator on the shift machine. Go forward, go backward selector. Got to plug off some coolant things here. Got to put a plug in here. Was not able to get an upper rad hose. Going to let that buck fill this thing up with coolant. And then, you know, brakes. No, nope. I'm sure it doesn't stop. But will it roll down the hill into the hay field? He can drive it around? Yes, we'll take that as a win. So I'm just gonna smash this out super quick and then uh, we'll wait for him to get home and then we'll fire it up again, let it get up to temperature and see if this thing moves and stops. Got all these old fuses at a swap meet and they have been super handy. You try to buy them new anymore like these here and they just rob you. We're gonna try to fix the gauges really quick. Ran the meter across the uh, instrument panel fuse in here. Wasn't getting voltage, pulled it out, and then wasn't getting continuity on the horseshoe mode. So I'm hoping this either burns it down or we get some sort of gauge. Ah, there we go. That was it. So now we should have temperature we should hopefully have fuel or oil pressure, and we've got our amp gauge back. Well, that's great. Well, I think I got her where we need to be to run her for a bit. This is really sketchy. Well, that's what we got. We got three gallons of ice cube juice in the radiator. I uh, gave the fuel make it happener a little bit of idle, and I twisted on the lightning whirler based on what I was hearing last night. A little bit of advance. Can't put a light on it because we don't have a timing tab. Thanks to the jungle website. So let's go ahead and twist this thing. See what happens.
charging. Oil pressure gauge is working and cap we gotta wait for, it's cold. check this sift machine. It's the one thing I'm really worried about is this transmission. I know nothing about it. Put four quarts in it. I think it only should hold five to 350. And it's empty, which means the torque converter is empty, which is odd. Probably means it was just installed. Never ran? I I don't know. I got even more juice. Shift machine update! Is it gonna shift now? Reverse. No. Oh, there it goes. I didn't have it in the right position. Yep. Neutral. Drive. Oh yeah, wow. Reverse. Drive. Reverse, brake, it stopped the truck, but we're barely moving. Gonna let it sit here and run in reverse for just a minute. Let the pump pump late. And then we'll check the fluid again. This interior ain't bad. It's really not. Oh, she's spicy. Check a license on the blood stick. What does it say to us? Still low, can't be. What am I dumping it on the ground? It's got a deeper pan, I guess. It's not a stock pan. I'm gonna add another cord. I asked Bentley to secure the fuel tank last night. This is what he came up with. That's uh, how I know he's mine. I'm gonna fill this up. I put a bunch of gas cleaner in here. Probably way too much for a five gallon tank. I'm gonna put some fresh fuel in. I think we'll cruise it down to Rusty Acres and dump some of the stuff. Oh, there's my chains. Those belong in the tow truck. Dump some of this stuff out so we're not just throwing it out in the hay field. I don't want to pick it up in the mower or the baler. And then he'll be home pretty soon and we'll let him go for a cruise. And that way I can test the brakes, make sure this thing is safe. Because I plan on just standing out and just letting him cut loose in it. We'll let him have a little bit of fun in the truck. Power steering works great. Stops it on the ramps, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to stop it whilst doing speed. Oh yeah. Well, it's moving. Made her down to Rusty Acres. Let's go see if we can find some place to put this stuff for now. Maybe in the bed of this GMC. Yeah. Well, this is where it sat for a long, long time. And now, it's out here running. All right, Bentley's home from school. I got her finished for you, bud. Yeah, it looks nice. Yeah? You want to take it for a cruise? Yeah. All right, fire it up. What do you think of that? Transmission shifts good. Go ahead, buddy. 
throttle string is pretty stiff. This is a smooth part of the field. It's kind of up on a hill though, but I've got some pretty good waves. Other parts of the field. There he goes. <laughs> Still a lot of work to do on that truck, but we got a solid foundation here. <laughs> fitting because he was with me when we picked this truck up pulled it out of a shop just drug it on a trailer and slammed it on the ground let's go see what he thinks what do you think That's awesome. awesome you like it mm -hmm. all right buddy thanks for the help love you dude go park it okay Alright. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of Vice Grip Garage. Fun little father son build. I'm sure you'll see the truck again. We've got to redo the bed. We've got brakes to figure out. We've got a fuel tank to figure out. Maybe even a different radiator. I don't know. We'll see what he wants to do. Haven't officially given it to him yet, but he sure likes calling it his truck. I'll tell you that much. Thanks again, guys, for watching. Appreciate all of you so much, and we'll see you very soon.